most modern day runners nowadays have a knit upper. And the three advantages to having a knit upper is conformity, breathability, and flexibility. But the disadvantages to having a knit upper is that with knit, you can actually have a chance of it tearing, just like clothing. Um, over time of using it or getting caught on something, you can tear it. Not as durable as leather. At the same time, even though it's not as durable as leather, you actually get water soaked in. With leather shoes, usually water just glides off the leather, but with mesh or knit shoes, the water just soaks right in. But that disadvantage to modern day runners is no more because the Adidas ATR Ultra Boost actually has water repellent as a feature on the prime knit upper of this shoe. Now the ATR Ultra Boost I believe is the very first Ultra Boost with water repellent feature on it. Now I know that there was a previous one with a water resistant lining with the vinyl lining around the entire toe box and the bottom side of the shoe so that when you step on water, water will splash up but it won't splash as much on the prime knit. However, with that vinyl lining, you basically block yourself from having more breathability and more flexibility. But with this ATR Ultra Boost, they're able to replicate the same water repellentness with the prime knit and not lose conformity or flexibility or breathability. And that's just fantastic. That means you get the best parts of why you want to knit upper as well as have the water repellent. So if you watch this clip of me pouring water onto the Adidas Ultra Boost, you can see that the water beads. Water beading means that the water is actually hydrophobic to the current surface. Now on car wax, you would see that water being poured on cars that are just polished, the water beads as well. That's because it also has hydrophobic coating to it. And that's why wax is so protectant to your car because instead of collecting dust, it will just fly off with water. Now. On the Adidas Ultra Boost, you can see that when I spray water on the normal one, the Raining Champ, the water just soaks right in, like a towel. But with the water repellent put onto the Ultra Boost, you can see that it beads up. Now the ATR, even though it has water repellent features in it, it's only water repellent to a certain degree. If you spray enough water and soak it enough, eventually it will get wet because it still does absorb water but it's just that in the minimal time that you can get out of the rain or be able to run through light rain, the water won't get through. But if you were to put your feet in a puddle and stay there, it will get soaked. It's not waterproof, it's water repellent. So that's the main difference between normal uh, all-terrain runners compared to the Ultra Boost one. Now, Ultra Boost is not the most perfect shoe in the world, but that doesn't stop Adidas from innovating and rebuilding the shoe every year. This A tier Ultra Boost is actually touched upon on every single aspect, except for the Boost alone. The A tier at first glance is, looks like any Ultra Boost with a sock collar, but in reality it actually has a lot of differences. The number one noted difference is of course the sock collar like I've said before. The second difference is that the eyelets are actually flexible and it doesn't need a cage to be embedded inside the knit because the three stripe cage is actually now prime knit. And I can't say it's a cage since it's inside the shoe, but it still feels way more conforming and tighter than a normal Adidas Ultra Boost with a cage on it. Now the third difference is the pattern on the prime knit ridges of the 3.0 prime knit is actually a lot less prominent. Very, very subtle and it's very smooth against the entire shoe. And the fourth one is actually the 3D printed heel cage. That heel cage is actually very tough. You knock on it and you can hear like a solid clamshell type sound. Because it's tighter, it actually holds down your heel a lot more compared to the normal Ultra Boost, which is just one flexible plastic that you can push in with your fingers and be able to see it flex. Now with the fifth feature, it's actually the outsole, which is a thicker outsole with nubbles that are a lot thicker, um, that are rectangular shaped as well. They allowed Boost to be Boost. What I meant is that most of the time with Adidas shoes, when they try to make a thicker outsole, they actually fail on making Boost feel the same. The very prime example of this is the tubular Boost shoe that they put Boost in the shoe but it still has a tubular outsole and the boost didn't do any difference because if the outsole is thick and hard, the boost actually doesn't flex at all or cushion at all. Last but not least, it's all in the details. The pull tab at the back heel is a suede, faux suede leather with a reflective detail, as well as the laces are rope. The original Ultra Boost has a booty shaped collar, which is just a slip on type shoe, but this Ultra Boost actually is like a sock to put on. Now, I know it has a tongue and it kind of looks whack, but if you think about it, for the people who just wear Ultra Boost, 
for casual wear, this totally fits them. If they want a conforming water repellent ultra boost, they have that as well as a tongue to make the shoe look normal when you wear normal pants or pants that cover over the sock collar. Now with the current ultra boost before the ATR has came out, there are two disadvantages that I personally noticed. Number one is that the outsole wears down really quickly. Even though it has a continental rubber outsole and you grind it out a lot, the front part of the ball of your feet actually gets thinner and thinner over time and some people in most cases gets this direct boost contact with the pavement or whatever that they walk on. And the second disadvantage is that the booty collar overstretches after a while. Even though it's more comfortable to slip in, I feel like it has less conformity around your ankle, making it a little bit loose to walk in. Now with the ATR though, they actually solve these problems right away. The first one is of course the sock collar, it conforms around your ankle so that it doesn't move as much. And it also has really, really, really good low end heel cushioning around the balls of your ankle i'm not sure what they're called but they really push it down and it's really comfortable much more tighter than the original booty collar of the ultra boost the thick outsole of the ultra boost is flexible and comfortable and you feel the little nubbles that you felt on the one point ultra boost and it basically wears down a lot less because it's so thick but with the little numbers I'm talking about on the 1.0 Ultra Boost when they first came out, they all have these little numbers at the bottom. The numbers actually are felt quite well when you impact on the ground. It's like small little balls that push up against the bottom of your feet and you can feel it as you take each step. However, those numbers have been complained a lot about how one, it doesn't have enough grip and two, because it just wears down way too quick compared to the 2.0 Ultra Boost or a 3.0 Ultra Boost with the Continental Outsole. Now with the Ultra Boost ATR, because it's so thick, you can actually see the little numbers being square blocks at the bottom of the shoe. And you, when you walk, you can actually feel that. And I actually love that feeling because it's a little bit like a massage on the bottom of your feet. Each step you take is like a nice roll transition from the heel to the toe. Well, that's about it about the details of this ATR Ultra Boost. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them as much as possible. This has been Billy Visuals. You guys just got visualized and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.